this video, we will explore different mic placements in front of a guitar amplifier and compare the sound of three different microphones. Every amplifier has one or more loudspeakers, sometimes hidden behind a grill cloth. In the center of the speaker is a smaller circular cap that covers the voice coil. The sound is brightest at the center of the speaker, and I often find a nice sweet spot right at the edge of the voice coil. Let's experiment with mic placement using a Shure SM57 LC placed in front of this vintage 1969 Fender Deluxe Reverb amp. The legendary SM57 is an inexpensive cardioid dynamic mic that is still a top choice of many engineers for miking guitar amplifiers. It has a gently rising response in the high mid-range and rolls off the bass starting around 200 Hz. First we will place the 57 at the edge of the voice coil, about one inch from the grill. Being a directional mic, the 57 will exhibit proximity effect, picking up less and less low end as it gets farther from the sound source. As the mic gets farther away, I'll push up the channel fader so you can still hear clearly. With this amp and this guitar, we liked the 57 about 4 inches from the grill. Placing the mic farther from the voice coil will yield a sound that gets darker and warmer. Let's experiment by starting dead center and moving gradually outward. You can get even more tonal variation from a microphone by placing it at an angle to the sound source. You can hear that there are many nice sounds depending on distance from the center and distance from the amp. Once you get your amp sounding the way you like it, remember to try some different mic positions before you start recording. Let's try two more mics. The Sennheiser MD421 was originally intended to be a vocal mic, but it is more often used for kick drum, rack toms, and guitar and bass amplifiers. It is another dynamic cardioid with a high-end boost that extends farther up than that of the 57. The bass response also extends farther down than the 57. This mic has a five-position bass roll-off switch that cuts low end as you move it from M for music to S for speech. I usually leave it in the M position. We also have a Royer R101. This is a ribbon dynamic mic. Ribbon mics use a thin strip of metallic ribbon stretched across a magnetic field to produce a signal. Like most ribbon mics, the R101 has a figure eight polar pattern, picking up sound from the front and the rear and rejecting sound from the sides. We placed all of these mics four inches from the edge of the voice coil to quickly compare them. <laughs> The 57 produced a clear sound with a sparkling high end, the 421 was a bit darker with a deeper low end, and the R101 was warm and thick, emphasizing the lower mid-range. Now let's go back through the mics again with a few new amplifier settings.
These three affordable mics all sound great in their own way, and we've only compared them at the voice coil. As you can imagine, there are many more tonal possibilities once you start moving them to different places on the speaker cone. You can choose a mic and experiment with placement until you find just the right sound for a particular amp in a particular song. But the real magic starts when you set up more than one mic and blend them to combine their different sonic characters. That is what we will do in our next video, Recording Electric Guitar Part 2.